Welcome to Corkine Today for November 26, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of Corkine right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, this is my opinion. If you want to learn more about these stories, come up with your own opinions. Check out the show notes down below. I'll put a link to each story there so you can read about them for yourself. And let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. If you are new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do. And hopefully we can help you I'll break free from the high cost of cable TV. Real quick before I get into the news of the day, I kind of forgot to mention last video that I am definitely not in the office. I'll be gone this week visiting family. So hang in here with me as we do these on the road where the video and audio may not always be perfect, but hang in here. I'll be back in the office very soon. But I hope whatever you're doing this week, if it's with family or at home, that you're having a fantastic Thanksgiving. And if you're outside the United States, I hope you're having a fantastic week. So let's get into the news, but bear with me as we continue to work, but from the road this week. All right, tons of Black Friday deals. Put a link down in the show to some of the best ones on Amazon right now. Uh, please remember if you use those links, it does help Core Cars News. We appreciate it. it, helps us keep our doors open. So check them out. Fire Amazon Fire TV starting in 19.99. The Roku Stick Plus is right now 29.99. And you will even on Black Friday be able to get the Roku Ultra for $49.99, that's half off, a really good price on that. So check that out in the show notes down below if you want to see some great core cutting Black Friday deals or support core cars news. All right, let's get into the news of the day. Um, over the weekend, core cars news broke the news that Comcast will be raising its prices on cable TV and internet. Now this came from a posted uh, pricing sheet that will take effect on December 28, 2019. Now Comcast has confirmed the price hike that yes, they are raising the prices on both internet and TV customers. And I'm gonna quickly read what they said here. Rising co uh, program costs, most notably for broadcast TV and sports, continue to be the biggest factors driving price increases for all content distributioners and their customers, Comcast said in a statement. While we absorb some of these increased program costs, they have a significant impact on the cost of our service. So. Comcast is saying, hey, sports and local TV is the reason we're increasing the price of Comcast TV and internet. Quick breakdown here. The broadcast TV fee is going from $10 to $4.95. The basic TV package um, is going up five bucks. Um, and internet, most internet plans will be going up $3. So um, the average, if you have a bundle Oh, and modem rentals, I almost missed this one. One dollar price hike in modem rentals. Cannot stress this enough. If you're a Comcast internet customer, buy your modem yourself because you're soon gonna be paying $14 a month to Comcast to rent that modem. Um, and a return payment fee is going up by $10 of a $30 fee. So the good news is for core cars is you will be saving money. The average uh, TV and internet bill with these price hikes are going up $13.99. That will add up to an additional $167.88 a year on the Comcast internet and TV bundlers that are affected by these price hikes. Um, so even with uh, like Hulu going up 10 bucks, you're still saving money because um, you're basically saving the same amount of money this year as you did last year. Because the TV customers are seeing about a $10 price hike. Also, when you look at the broadcast TV fee and the base package going up five bucks. so. Once again, I'll be interested to see how widespread this is covered because when Hulu and other places raise their price, it's front page news. We'll see if Comcast gets the same treatment for raising their price on TV and internet customers. Good news is you're going up about four bucks on internet versus um, a little under $10 for TV. So still a lot cheaper. Let me know though, are you still a Comcast customer? I know we have a lot of people who watch that are still on the fence. Like, do I cut the cord? Don't I cut the cord? Should I do it? Now, will this price hike here with Comcast uh, force you to go and cut the cord? What do you think of this? Um, if you're one of those people who said, oh, Hulu's going up 10 bucks, I might as well go back to cable, it's cheaper. What do you think of this? Almost $14 in price hikes on Comcast, internet, and TV customers. Would this change your plan at all? So let me know. This does come a few months after Spectrum raised its price. Spectrum, when it raised its price, that was the third price hike in 12 months on their service. So I'd love to know what you think of this and what you, your plans are for all that. 
So leave me a comment, let me know, but we'll be watching this closely. If you see any other price hikes, let me know. Comcast is um, saying this is on the 18th. Now that's for the Atlanta, Georgia market where they were talking about these price hikes sometimes get phased in over a couple months across the nation. So you may not necessarily see this price hike take effect on the 18th where you live. Uh, but we do have a full copy of the price um, increase sheet in the post link to down below. All right, Disney Plus news. We got a few quick things here. I'm gonna try to race through. Disney Plus is adding um, about a million subscribers per day according to a new report. This is a new study that just came out that said Disney um, is having a really good run at it. So we learned that they added about 10 million subscribers when they launched on day one. Now, according to this report, um, Disney Plus is um, adding about 10, um, or adding about a million subscribers per day. That would make Disney Plus probably the fastest growing streaming service in the world. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Um, maybe another one faster, but I don't know what it is at this moment. So let me know, or what do you, what do you think of Disney Plus? Do you think this can continue? Um, I, I think some of this growth has to be attributed to them rolling out additional markets. It wasn't that long ago that Australia and New Zealand added Disney Plus. So let me know, do you think Disney Plus can continue this? Does it surprise you that they added a million subscribers a day right now? Also, Disney Plus has re-added a continue watching feature. Last week we learned that uh, according to Disney's head of um, streaming services, I guess we'll call his job title, that they had to remove some features at launch to deal with the massive load. The 10 million people sign up in a day stress their system. They drop some stuff like continue or like continue watching, restart, and the like. This morning, or I should say late last night, Disney Plus re-added a continue watching feature. Now you can um, easily on the home screen of the Disney Plus app and on their Disney Plus website, find a new row that just says, hey, here's the show you just watched. Would you like to continue it? which is a pretty nice feature that you're able to go and uh, restart a show without having to hunt for it, without having to search for it, without having to go through different categories to refine it. It's not right there. It just says, hey, you were watching this. Would you like to watch the next episode in the series? Something that most uh, companies have offered, you know, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon have offered it. Disney Plus had it, pulled it back as one of the features they did to kind of lessen the burden on their servers to be able to handle the 10 million on launch day and now a million people a day being added. It'll be interesting to see what Disney Plus does next. Um, thank you for the readers who sent in this as a tip. If you notice anything new or different with Disney Plus or any service, make sure to go over at corecarsnews.com, click on the contact us button and send us an email. Try to be as specific as you can. If you're emailing us like a deal, try to include a link to the deal. That's a huge help. But let me know, um, and let me know what you think of that. One of the other big Disney stories in the world of streaming is Hulu is now reportedly the fastest growing live TV streaming service. Hulu is now, according to Muffet Nathanson, the largest streaming service when looking at live TV providers with over 2.7 million subscribers. Um, that would um, put them at about um, 400,000 new subscribers in the third quarter of 2020. Uh, 19 calendar year. Uh, and that edges out Sling TV and is significantly more, more uh, additions or uh, new subscribers than any other service we've learned. Hulu is seeming to be very effective in taking their on-demand customers and convincing them to sign up for their live TV service. We'll have to see if this continues. Muffet, Muffet Nathanson ran this. Disney has publicly stated recently that they say Hulu is the fastest growing. And they say there's 29 million Hulu subscribers, but they won't list any um, the live TV breakout anymore. Now that Disney owns them, they're not breaking that number out from the on-demand customers other than to say Hulu with live TV is the fastest growing live TV service in the United States. So let me know. Um, I'll be very interested to see what this looks like a year, or uh, I should say when we get the fourth quarter 2019 calendar year numbers, because we got the price hike coming up with Hulu with live TV, a $10 price hike. Will that damper this? Will that make people leave? Will that give the leadership back to Sling TV? Or are people gonna be very happy? Because even though it's going up to $54.99, you're getting a $5.99 kind of credit because of the fact that the on-demand service is included with that. And then if you bundle Disney Plus 
um, and ESPN Plus, you can take an additional $5.99 off that $54.99 price. So it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. See, see if Disney Plus is still the largest live TV streaming service. Is it still growing as fast? Only time will tell. Let me know what you think. All right, a few more stories. Pluto TV has added a 24-7 Cake Boss channel. I guess Cake Day, some people were telling me. It's National Cake Day coming up. So perfect timing to add in um, Cake Boss to uh, Pluto TV for a 24-7 Pluto TV channel. This joins other Pluto TV channels that are 24-7, um, like uh, Fear Factor, Cold Case Files, The Adams Family, um, and many more. Now this is a Discovery channel um, here. Discovery and Pluto TV partnered some time ago to bring Discovery content to Pluto TV. It'll be interesting to see if additional content is added from Discovery in the future. Um, and no details of what how many channels or what kind of part or additional features from and content from Discovery will be coming to Pluto TV at this time. And um, speaking of free services, ABC News is posted about a dozen positions online and it's hiring two executive producers to expand their free ABC News streaming service. You may have seen ABC News streaming on like the Roku channel. Uh, I think it's on Zumo TV and a few other um, services out there. We can watch 24 seven free ABC News, much like the CBS News service. Now, according to these job postings posted online spotted by Deadline, um, it looks like ABC is planning to significantly expand their TV service here, um, their free news one, uh, with additional staff to produce more content, new producers, and trying to basically compete in what's becoming a very important field, free ad-supported news. CBS is, wasn't the first to do this, but I think they were one of the first very successful to offer a 24-7 live news feed for free online with, with ads. ABC and others are moving into it. NBC is going to go full time next year. They're doing theirs for a few hours a day right now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the news breakout is here in a few months. So let me know, uh, what do you think of all the new free ad supported news? You got Newsnet, ABC, NBC, CBS, and more offering 100% free ad supported news. So let me know what you think of that. Do you have a particular favorite? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, are you a YouTube TV customer and have you experienced buffering? You are not alone. Um, starting over the weekend, we started getting a lot of reports of buffering, kind of hit or miss. Some people are having a lot, some people are not. Um, I'm on the road, but when we test it here, I'm not having problems, but YouTube has um, publicly come out and confirmed it. YouTube's community manager on Reddit, through the official YouTube account, posted saying, the team has received a lot of reports of this behavior on Roku recently respond to a question about buffering on Roku and are looking into it. When you get a chance, please send feedback report from your Roku TV profile icon, send feedback. Uh, so yes, there is seems to be an increased amount of buffering happening with YouTube TV. YouTube TV is looking into it. And if you are experiencing it, they want you to submit feedback so you can send some details to them about what you're having. Again, click on your profile icon in the app, select, um, send feedback there and then send a report to them so that their team can investigate what's happening and they can look into your device <clears throat> and see, hey, if it's happening with this particular, maybe it's happening with this particular version of the OS from Roku, but I've heard this happening with Apple TV and Fire TV too. So are you experiencing buffering with YouTube TV? If so, what are you experiencing? What device are you using? Leave us a comment, let us know and make sure you send that feedback so Google can look into it also. All right, last story up of the day, CBS All Access is adding Nickelodeon programming. So we talked yesterday about how um, Viacom and CBS will complete their merger next week on Wednesday. Now CBS All Access, and we at the time we said, hey, this probably means Viacom content coming to CBS All Access and CBS content coming to Pluto TV. Well, they didn't wait for the merger. Yesterday, um, Viacom started adding um, classic Nickelodeon programming, not a live feed of Nickelodeon, but Nickelodeon programming to CBS All Access with about a thousand titles added. Now this is likely just the start um, and there's a full statement down there from the president of CBS Interactive if you wanna read it in the post. But this is probably the first step of bringing more content to both places. Could make CBS All Access a whole lot more attractive if you have both CBS content and Viacom content. 
Be interesting. I kind of feel like if they're going to go this route, CBS All Access should be renamed. If it's going to have both Viacom and CBS content, having a different name probably would be a good move for it because otherwise people are going to have PlayStation View Syndrome, right? Oh, I'm not a big fan of CBS programming. Why get CBS All Access? Well, CBS All Access also has Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, and the list goes on and on. So maybe a name change would be a bad idea there. So leave me a comment. Let me know. One thing I hope they don't do, I hope it's not Viacom CBS All Access. That would be a bad name. Um, Viacom, if you're listening, don't try to add your name to be Viacom CBS All Access. Just come up with something different would be my suggestion. But leave me a comment. Let me know. What would you rename it? What do you think of all the uh, um, Nickelodeon content coming to um, CBS All Access? We knew for a while that Nickelode or that CBS was planning to add more children's programming. Now with the addition of Nickelodeon to the family, uh, they're taking advantage of that to add Nickelodeon content, which could make CBS All Access a much more attractive service. Not only may you have the new Star Trek D uh, Discovery or the new Picard show, but hey, there's also stuff here for my kids that help justify the cost. So leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And that's it for today. I hope you all have a fantastic week. If you're jumping in a car tomorrow to drive up for Thanksgiving or a plane, please be safe, be careful out there. Hopefully those storms aren't going to hit where you're, you are going or coming from. But I hope everybody has a fantastic Thanksgiving. I'll be back tomorrow and we'll continue to post videos most of the week. But keep an eye on the community tab. I don't think we're doing the Q&A tomorrow. Just having a lot happen with Thanksgiving being the next morning. So keep an eye on that. If I can do it, I will, but it probably isn't going to happen. So take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it.